Hey guys, it's Chris Mitchell here. I just want to help a few of you guys out that may be using the Mac OS X version of Rhino 6. I love Rhino and uh, I know I love the Mac, so I hope you guys are in the same boat that I am. And uh, you just want to want to be able to use the, all the tools the Windows guys get to use, but uh, maybe a little bit different on your Mac. So what we're going to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use decals in uh, Rhino 6 for OS X. Uh, it's a little anti-intuitive at first. It, it really is. It's like you have to click something to click something else and it gets a little confusing. So let's go ahead and, and jump right into this. Uh, you'll notice that the decal window is not up here at all. And nor if, if you searched in the help or any of, this, uh, any of the toolbar up at the top, you're not going to find decals at all. So I thought that they just didn't implement it in Rhino. Uh, six for Mac and I was really confused because I, I, they said they were so if you're in the same boat that I am you, you've probably been looking for it and can't find it so let's go ahead and talk about where this is first of all you're not going to see the decal window up here until you click an object and right now just to give you an idea what I'm looking at is just a just a little object that I've got here uh, I'm going to be doing a mock guitar string packaging and then and guitar strings will fit in an envelope about like that so I'm going to go to my perspective view that I've got saved, a named view that I've got saved that keeps showing you how to do this. Um, but anyway, there's, there's no decal up here like we were talking about. And you're not going to see a decal until you actually click on an object. Then you still don't see a decal. You're then going to have to go to the properties panel. Then you can see the decal icon. So what you're going to do now is you're going to click the decal icon. Of course, you have nothing in the decal palette up here because you haven't selected anything. So we're going to go ahead and click the plus icon and add it. Now I've already got some created, and uh, this is an interesting one that I created in Illustrator and, of course, uh, Rhino. You'll see what I'm talking about. We're going to use the planar view and the forward direction, and we're going to apply that. Now notice it says click the first corner of the rectangle, but I don't really want to do this in the perspective view because that doesn't really give me a whole lot of of uh, you know uh, direction I mean I, I really can't see it in the front view you'll notice that I've already got rendered selected not shaded and you'll see why I'm going to, and I've got my O snaps down here set to end and near and the reason why is because I want that O snap to grab it right on the end and drag that now the reason why I had that in rendered view is because you're not going to see anything if you don't have that in rendered view if you have this in wireframe view or shaded you're not going to see anything. That's what you're going to see. So you have to be in rendered view to be able to see that. But I want to show you something really quick. Uh, if I click on my perspective, it all should be good, right? I click from end to end and it snapped to the end. But look at this. Nothing yet. Again, because I'm in shaded. I'm going to go to rendered. And if I click off of that, I want you to look at that bit mapping that happens there on the edge. If I zoom in, you're going to see some, some really weird artifacting that happens on the edge. Well, you know, as you can imagine, Rhino didn't click all the way to the edge. I mean, it clicked to the edge, but then, you know, you've got some artifacting because it's not quite perfect. So I'm going to go back to my front view, and I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, the object. But here's the problem. If I click on the object and I start to, to stretch this out and resize it, it's not just the decal. It's the actual object. So what I've got to do is I've got to click the decal widget, which is right here. It's that little cube. And it basically gives you a gumball tool of the decal widget. But again, I've got my object selected, so I don't want to just start dragging that. I'm going to go to my top view, and if I zoom in, you can see I've actually got the object selected. Well, I'm going to select my, my widget, the actual decal widget. So now all I've got selected is actually just that decal right there, just that packaging. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit, or actually... I'm going to grab that, that scale, and I'm going to hold down Shift and Option on the Mac, and I'm going to drag that just beyond the boundary right there. And the reason why I'm doing that is because that will fill in those gaps on that, uh, on that weird bitmap curve on that edge. So I've clicked on that. I've, I've dragged it just beyond the boundary. And if I click on that again, and I deselect the, the, uh, the widget, the decal widget, it's going to deselect the outward lines and it's going to be a nice clean look. Then if I go back to perspective view, look at that. That's a nice clean look. If I zoom in right there, you notice it's nice and clean on that. That is really, really nice. Uh, and if I go, even if I go back to my uh, inspector panel and go back to the view that I wanted, the perspective view that I wanted, uh, you, can, you can see the background is uh, in really good shape. It's nice and clean. Now you see some moray effect right there, and that's actually, that's okay. That's going to render out just fine once I 
view this capture to the file. That's going to render out. And it's going to look nice and clean. I was able to create that uh, that helix, that string uh, design right there in uh, Rhino, of course. And then I was able to do the uh, the background. I did the background. Actually, I took a picture of an F14 over at Pearl Harbor. That was a really, really cool, cool day. But what we're going to do is, uh, I don't know if you know this trick or not, but if you, if you view capture to file, that's a great way to uh, render something out. It, it does it much, much quicker than the uh, render in Rhino, and it's, it gives you great results. Now, I'm going to size this at 6,000 pixels because that will take care of all of the artifacting problems that we were having along the edge there. That will take care of those bitmap issues. So I'm going to go ahead and, and size that at 6,000. I'm going to save it as the desktop as, we'll just say, render sample. How about that? We'll just say render sample. I'm going to save that. It doesn't take really all that long. I mean, it's a lot quicker than the Rhino save, uh, the Rhino render. But, you know, Rhino's render right here, it does a pretty good job of rendering. You get a good idea. It's, it's definitely good enough for screen, but you might be worried about something like that, like a Mori effect. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that and show you guys that. If I've got that Rhino render down here, render sample, if I pull that up and I let you guys see that, look at that. It's nice and clean, really nice and clean. And you, you notice that more effect is now going in the barcode right there. So that's a really, really nice um, way to render something really quickly. And of course, I've saved it as a ping, so it's got a transparent background. So if you're going to use something in, in packaging or in web material like this is going to be, you're going to want to do something like that so that you can have that nice transparent background. Now the other thing that you can do, um, I went ahead and did a composite so you could see what a shadow would look like. I did that in uh, Photoshop so that you could see what a, a drop shadow would look like. I didn't want to use the Rhino drop shadow because a Rhino drop shadow just kind of, it, it makes it, it takes it way out in here and it, there's only so many limited tools that the lights have in Rhino and I really just wanted just a bottom shadow right there. So I did that in Photoshop so that it would create a nice little um, little effect on the bottom of the packaging as if it was sitting on a shelf or something like that. Anyway, you get the idea, and I hope you guys enjoy, and good luck with